I'll go James. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I support the motion before us today, but I am not under any illusions about the risks and difficulties involved. We have heard already many references to those ris risks today. And from those who are more cautious about any action at all, a sense that what is covered by the motion before us today will not be enough to eliminate the threat to the region and the wider world posed by the ISIS barbarians. But when the people of a peace-loving nation come with heavy hearts to the conclusion that there is no alternative to the waging of a just war, the situation will always be fraught with doubt and uncertainty, a lack of trustworthy intelligence about what is happening on the ground, concerns about those close to the conflict with whom it will be necessary to form alliances, a desire to ensure a more promising political landscape than currently exists, or frankly, is likely to exist this side of 50 years. Those against any form of action will always pose questions that are impossible to answer at the outset of any conflict. They will draw on historical examples of when things go wrong, of which there are several in recent years. But they will ignore the examples of more successful interventions, such as in Bosnia and in Sierra Leone. The fact that the answers to those questions are imperfect does not provide sufficient justification for turning our backs on the Iraqi government's plea for help. Yes, we must proceed with caution. There must be an absolute commitment to minimise casualties among innocent people who have suffered so much. I, I give way to the Honourable Gentleman. And I th th thank the Honourable Lady for giving way and I was listening very carefully to what she had to say and the rest of the debate. And I will support the motion, but I think she's absolutely right to make the point about minimising casualties. It is one of those arguments that are put against action that we must hear, but it shouldn't prevent us. First century military equipment at their disposal. The methods of, bar of ISIS are so barbaric, <coughs> the manpower, military and financial resources they have so substantial that the other regional powers are not a match for them without Western support. Initially their focus has been on securing territorial gains and then expanding within the Middle East. Unchecked, the history of fundamentalism shows us that there is no doubt whatsoever that ISIS will then turn their sights on Western targets. The Prime Minister is quite right 
when he says that ISIS are a direct threat to us in the UK. And that is clear from the number of young men who have already travelled and been recruited by them to join their fight, some of whom will find ways of getting back into this country, no matter what measures we put in place to deter them, to try to mount terrorist attacks. But that is not the only justification. It is only 11 years since we invaded Iraq, an invasion to which we were not invited, for which there was no post-invasion plan, and which presided over the disastrous debathification of the Iraqi army. The then followed Abu Ghraib, Guantanamo Bay, and other gross abuses and insults to the Islamic world. It was Lord Salisbury who said, our first duty is towards the people of this country to maintain their interests and rights. Our second is to all humanity. I, I fear I can't for the time, I'm sorry. Mr Speaker, nowhere is this second point that Lord Salisbury made more true than in the Middle East, a part of the world which this country and France were actually governing up until just 70 years ago. In supporting this motion, I believe that we should fulfil our moral responsibility to the region by confronting ISIS and supporting the forces of moderation in that part of the world. We should increase our aid to the region and take in our fair share of refugees. They cannot all continue to be absorbed by Jordan, Turkey and Lebanon on top of the hundreds of thousands, if not approaching a million people that those countries are having or already have had to absorb. And we should prevent further spread of militant ideology, especially among young Muslims in Britain. ISIS are a grave threat to world peace and in their barbarism, a truly satanic force which must be confronted by the rest of humanity. We have the measure of, fundamentalism, uh, of fundamentalist Islam, even if we are still working out exactly and in fine detail how to respond. As Austin Chamberlain said of Hitler's Germany, for a people who believe in nothing but force, force is the only answer. I'm afraid that this will turn out to be true of the war declared by ISIS on all those who do not share their narrow and warped interpretation of Islam and on all women and girls of whatever faith or none. Although military solutions are far from enough, it is very unlikely that we will be able to maintain our freedoms without utilising our military strength as part of a much broader strategy. Pat McFadden.